Welcome to another video of Health Facts with Dr. Banish. Uh, in this video, we're going to find out if probiotics are helping with prevention and treatment of COVID-19 uh, or we shouldn't be using them. For people who are more audiovisual, I believe this website from John Hopkins University is uh, very interesting in terms of uh, the COVID-19 uh, reported cases and also the death rates also the uh, five days average uh, COVID-19 cases in different countries for example as you can see in US uh, the five days average is up in Brazil is up uh, Mexico is up India is up and uh, Peru is down and uh, as you can see Chile is up so uh, this is a very good uh, comparison and uh, again for uh, people who are more audiovisual this is a very good uh, page of this uh, great university in my previous videos we talked about how vitamin C and vitamin D3 and zinc supplementation and NAC which is N-acetylcysteine uh, supplementation could actually help with the increasing the immune system and decreasing the chance of uh, getting infected with COVID-19 but this article um, that is published on May 8, 2020 in Frontier in Public Health uh, publication is I think interesting um, she was talking about using probiotics to flatten the curve of coronavirus disease COVID-19 pandemic so that's why I actually put this in my video and uh, here we go so COVID-19 presents with a spectrum of disease severity ranging from mild and non-specific flu-like symptoms to pneumonia and life-threatening complications such as acute respiratory distress syndrome and multiple organ failure while transmission of SARS-CoV-2 is thought to occur mainly via respiratory droplets the gut may also contribute toward the pathogenesis of COVID-19 SARS-CoV-2 RNA has been detected in the gastrointestinal tract and stool samples from patients and in sewage systems. Coronavirus, including SARS-CoV-2, can invade enterocytes, which is the cells uh, inside the intestinal wall, thereby acting as a reservoir for the virus. Indeed, large clinical studies from China indicate that gastrointestinal symptoms are common in COVID-19 and are associated with disease severity. Probiotics are live microorganisms that, when administered in adequate amounts, confer a health benefit on the host. Clinical evidence shows that certain probiotic strains help to prevent bacterial and viral infection, including uh, GI uh, gastroenteritis, sepsis, and respiratory tract infection. Clinical data supporting the use of probiotics to prevent COVID-19. Probiotics can prevent antibiotic-associated diarrhea and infections in the gastrointestinal tract, but also infections at other sites, including sepsis and RTIs, which is respiratory tract infections. Meta-analysis, uh, which is a very reliable study, which actually studying or observing other uh, studies, many studies, um, which is uh, reliable per se, randomized contract trial, multiple randomized, uh, randomized contract trial are the gold standards for evidence-based medicine. In one analysis of more than 8,000 preterm infants included in randomized contract trial, Patients receiving enteral supplementation with probiotics showed a reduction in necrotizing enterocolitis, nosocomial, which is hospital sepsis, and all-cause mortality. 
a well-conducted randomized control trial including more than 4,000 newborns in India found a reduction in sepsis and lower respiratory tract infections in infants treated with a strain of lactobacillus uh, fantarium, which is a form of uh, probiotics, combined with prebiotics, which is the food for probiotics, which are gross substrates specified for beneficial microorganisms. In other words, food for probiotics today. Viruses are etiologic agents of over 90% of upper respiratory tract infections. So more than 90% of upper respiratory tract infections are caused by viruses. The positive impact of probiotics on prevention of upper respiratory tract infection is documented in a number of studies. A meta-analysis of 12 RCTs including 3,720 adults and children reported a two-fold lower risk of dropping, of developing upper respiratory tract infection in subjects taking probiotics and a small but significant reduction in disease severity in those infected. A randomized double-blind placebo-controlled intervention study of 479 adults showed that uh, multiple probiotics, lactobacillus, bifidobacterium, and bifidobacterium bifidium, with vitamins and minerals lowered not only the duration of common cold episodes, but also days with fever. The impact of probiotics on prevention of upper respiratory tract infection caused by specific viruses has also been documented. An RCT including 94 preterm infants showed that galacto-oligosaccharides and polyextrose, a prebiotic mixture, or probiotic lactobacillus, GG, uh, given between 3 and 60 days of life lowered the incidence of clinically defined virus associated R RTI, which is uh, respiratory tract infection, by two to three fold compared to placebo. Probiotics have also been used to prevent bacterial lower RTIs in critically ill adults. Meta analysis of RCTs, including close to 2,000 patients, found that. Probiotic strains reduce the incidence of ventilator-associated pneumonia. But low quality of evidence and conflicting results among different studies calls for additional well-conducted RCDs. Respiratory tract infections such as influenza are associated with an imbalance in the microbial communities of the respiratory and gastrointestinal tracts. This dysbiosis may alter subsequent immune function and predispose to secondary bacterial infection. As reports from China indicates that COVID-19 might be associated with intestinal dysbiosis, causing inflammation and poor response to pathogens. The case exists for probiotic strains that restore gut homeostasis. It is feasible that orally administered probiotic strains could further influence this gut-lung axis, as some can migrate from the gut to distant sites such as the breast to treat mastitis. Also because, as you uh, remember from my last videos, that we talked about the pathogenesis of COVID-19 uh, virus, which is not only an influenza virus, uh, and use the lungs as an entry point. And um, basically, COVID-19 is an oxidative stress, causing an oxidative stress in our circulation or vascular system, uh, and then creating the clots and everything. And in cases that is actually uh, uh, involving the GI system, which is gastrointestinal system, uh, for sure uh, when you use a probiotic, 
it could actually increase the immune system first of all and it's uh, helping with the gut lining uh, so, which other in other words is actually enterocytes so it's helping uh, with the whole damages that COVID-19 could cause in our body now we know the importance of probiotics in uh, prevention and treatment of COVID-19 infections uh, we're going to check out the safety of probiotics probiotics are generally safe even in the most vulnerable population and in intensive care settings cases of probiotic associated bacteremia and fungemia which means entering the bacteria or fungus inside our circulation have occurred on extremely rare occasions mainly in premature and immunocompromised patients treated with preparations lacking adequate quality control rather than considered intensive care patients too ill to receive probiotic and prebiotic therapy rcts of probiotics for the prevention of ventilator associated pneumonia provide a reason to consider them moreover in an RCT of 65 critically ill, mechanically ventilated, multiple trauma patients, the symbiotic, which means the combination of uh, different strains of a probiotic, plus inulin, oat bran, pectin, and resistant starch, resulted in reduced rate of infections, syst systemic inflammatory response syndrome, sepsis, days of stays in the intensive care unit, days under mechanical ventilation and mortality. So in conclusion, I believe taking probiotics is really crucial in uh, patients with COVID-19 or as a preventative measure, uh, or even in patients who are hospitalized in ICU and, and under ventilator to decrease the number of days that they are um, in ICU or uh, under ventilator. Uh, normally, I prescribe uh, the Genestra uh, brand, uh, which is called HMF Fort, uh, one cap per day uh, as a preventative measure, and uh, in treatment, two of those capsules are enough. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you like this video please share it with your friends and family and in your social media and uh, subscribe to this channel for more videos to come.